talk about the adult manifestation of this lie. People close to you hurt and abuse you. First of all, this lie manifests itself in people's adult lives in the form of abusive relationships. So let's start with significant other because that's a close relationship category. So people who uh, were programmed to believe that it's normal, and once again, these are unconscious lies. People don't walk around and say, hey, I believe it's normal for people close to me hurt and abuse me. It's not something you, in fact, you, you consciously believe the opposite. You don't, you don't consciously believe it's, it, it's normal to have people close to you hurt and abuse you, but it's something that you do. It's, it's something that it's, 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 it's maltreatment that you've been programmed to accept from people in close relationship categories. So say as an adult, you're, in a, 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 you're, you're married, your husband or boyfriend or girlfriend. I work with so many people who suffer with this issue and they're, they're accepting mental, emotional, financial, and physical abuse from their significant other. Now let me share an example of someone who was not programmed to think like that. See, because you can be, or if you suffer with these lies, and most of us suffer with uh, uh, some of them, but if you suffer with this particular lie, people close to you hurt and abuse you, birds of a feather flock together. So you probably surround yourselves with like-minded people and you guys have conditioned each other to think it's natural to be mistreated by people close to you. But I did a lifestyle, com a series of lifestyle comparison groups early in the development process of the lies that bind. And I brought in some women to talk to the women in the program who um, were not raised with this, these dysfunctional beliefs. They were raised with the healthy belief on the back of the car. So we asked one of the young ladies that, that came to speak to us. Now, no one's life is perfect, but they were raised in a pretty healthy environment. So I asked the young lady, I said, have you ever been in a, late, in a relationship with an abusive significant other. And she looked at me, she said, Anisha, I met a guy when I was at MIT. And so that tells you a little bit about her life, okay? So she said, um, we started dating and I went to Chicago with a group of friends for the weekend and I decided to go out and have some drinks with a guy I met in Chicago. So I wanted to be honest with this guy, so I called him and I told him, hey, I went out with a guy and we had a couple drinks. She was like, Anisha, he called me a slut. She said, I was like, oh. I slammed the phone down. She was like, I didn't talk to him anymore. And everybody in the group, including me, we were all looking at her with amazement. And you didn't talk to him anymore because he called you a slut. So one of the clients looked at her and was like, oh, so you didn't talk to homeboy no more after that. So she looked at her, she went, of course I didn't, he called me a slut. She was looking at us like, y'all still on drugs. Of course I didn't talk to him anymore. I mean, she didn't say that, but that's what, you know, her facial expression said. So yeah, it's people who do not believe it's natural for you to talk to them any kind of way, let alone abuse them physically or financially. And I've had people, and these lies do not discriminate. So I've had people in my group at the same time, this is when I was doing drug court and sobriety group. I, I, I um, consulted with 61st District Court for 11 years. They're still using the program. It's just another therapist is, is actually delivering it. Um, they, I've had people in my group from upper class society, upper middle, middle class, and poverty. And they both, all of the, the different social economic classes, I've had people with the same issue, people close to you hurt and abuse you. So I've had a person from the hood uh, uh, who was raised in poverty uh, try to judge the client from the suburbs who are uh, from, from an upper class family because her husband is, is hitting on her. You know, you you know you can't make these adults leave a uh, 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 you know a domestic violence situation. She's gonna judge her. I said, hold up, wait a minute, get your cards out, because everybody in my group got a stack of their cards sitting in front of them. I'm saying you both suffer with the issue. People close to you hurt and abuse you. You're you wouldn't. She, I wouldn't let anybody put their hands on me. No, but you have a, a boyfriend at home that's laying on a couch watching Gilligan Island reruns while you working two jobs to pay the bills. And when you get home, now because this, this is stuff she shared in group, when you get home, he want to know when dinner going to be ready and when you going to wash a load of clothes because he doesn't have any clean socks. That's financial abuse. That's emotional abuse. That's mental abuse. Now, her husband is putting his hands on her, which he should not be, be doing, and she's here getting some help so she can uh, start standing up for herself. But uh, she don't understand why you don't have a Chanel purse she got a beans in the parking lot 
Now she got to blow into a machine to make it start up, but she got a Benz in the parking lot, okay? So she don't understand why you don't have a Benz. She don't understand why you don't have a Chanel purse. Surely you have a black and a white and a, and a, a, a black and a, a brown Chanel purse at least. How do you live? And so so we're not going to, you know, we're not going to judge her. You both suffer with people close to you, hurt and abuse you. And you both need some cognitive restructuring in that area. And so this lie will also cause you to accept abuse from family members, you know, aunts and uncles and, and other people. People, sometimes people who were the original transmitter of the lie. You're still accepting abuse from mothers and fathers and aunts and uncles at the family reunion. So this lie uh, can affect you in your adult life the same way uh, it was transmitted in childhood. Um, and friends, I stopped people in my group from calling abusive people friends. I, every time they would say they two-faced and backstabbing friend, I would say halt, halt. No, let's say so-called friend because you keep attaching maltreatment to the label friend. So I had another lifestyle comparison group where I brought in a lady and who had a healthy childhood and we asked her. The whole group, we asked her, have you ever had a two-faced and backstabbing friend? She looked at us. She said, Anisha, sometimes I'm around mean, rude, inconsiderate people at work because I have to be around them. She said, sometimes I encounter mean people like a, a rude cashier, you know, in my day-to-day -day activities. She said, but in my own personal life. On my time, when I can choose who I'm around, why would I choose to be around someone like that? And for heaven's sake, why would I call them a friend? We were all looking at her like, oh no, sound kind of crazy when you say it like that, huh? That's how different people live who don't struggle with this issue. So if you're still accepting any type of abuse, Mental, emotional, financial, uh, uh, physical, spiritual. Because I've had people who've been abused by spiritually by, by, by people in their church. If you're still accepting abuse by anyone close to you, we'll, we'll address that other lie when you just accept abuse in general. But now we're talking about by people close to you, then you need to work the back of this car. So what's the solution? The solution is to address this issue. Spend some time with this, 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 uh, reading the back of the car. Develop some one-line com comebacks. Um, do a relationship inventory. Write down all of the people who are in your life, who, who have a front row seat in your life, and determine whether they can stay in the front row or if they need to be moved to the balcony. Because you don't want to get up, get, some people you don't want to get rid of, you're related to them, you know. So you can move, but you can move people out the front row and put them in the bal balcony. Meaning I only see you at the family reunion. And I sit at the other table where you're not, okay. So you're still in my life, but you're in the balcony. Some people you're going to have to move them uh, to the lobby. And some people you're going to have to be, and I don't care what label they wear. Mother, brother, friend, uncle, cousin. Uh, uh, if they are abusive and will not respect your boundaries and your new belief system, you call security and have them escorted out of your life, meaning you escort them out there out of your life. But I want to end with a warning to people who are in domestic violence situations. If you are in a domestic violence situation, do not try to use all these profile principles that you hear me saying with this person in your home. Do not read the back of the card to them. Wait till they go and call the domestic violence program so they can help you leave. They have people who are trained, excuse me, to help you exit uh, a domestic violence situation safely. Uh, because you know uh, whether or not you win a relationship with somebody who are not, who's not going to listen to you read the back of this car, they're going to tie you up and put you in the basement. I'm serious. I'm not being funny or, you know, I'm facetious. I'm serious. Call the domestic violence program and help, let them help you uh, get an exit strategy. So I'm going to end by reading the back of the card. The back, the front of the lie is on the front, but you know, you would have these cards if you're uh, lies that by an alumni or service provider. Uh, the back of the card, the, the lie is people close to you hurt and abuse you. The truth is, People close to you are just people who you have chosen to have close to you. They are not some magical creatures with awesome mystical powers to hurt, control, and manipulate you. People close to you are people close to you only do to you what you allow them to do. If you tolerate abuse, then you are telling people you are okay with the abuse and please feel free to continue.
You don't have to accept abuse from anyone and certainly not from people who are supposed to care about you. You can choose who you have in your life and how close they are to you. The first person you need to check about abusing you is yourself. How dare you keep abusing yourself by letting others hurt you? How dare you? Caution. If you are in a domestic violence situation, consult professional help. That's actually on the card. That's how important that is. All right, so that's all for today's video. Um, I will see the um, gold, silver and gold and platinum people later um, next week. Thank you.